folks. Grab a seat and pour your drink neat as Whiskers and Whiskies presents Tales of the Trophies, the Big Ten's greatest rivalries. I'm Mike. With me is EJ. Joe, unfortunately, could not make it this week. We'll hope to see him back here soon. EJ, how you doing, buddy? To be honest with you, um, I'm already a ball of nerves as this is, you know, the beginning of this week's college football week. And yeah, I'm already, I'm already feeling pretty sick to my stomach. Um, yeah, yeah. Big week coming up here for you, my man. And for and for Joseph as well. I am uh, very excited to uh, watch the game with you lads this weekend. And, uh, and I guess on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be agitating the sh- the heck out of that could be agitating the heck out of you guys yeah uh in joe's honor i've had a couple of uh a couple of, i had to try the drink here uh you know really test it out make sure to do, do a little bit of uh of uh you know quality control analysis here on the drink that he recommended for us sure. uh and yeah it turns out once again it's a winner uh so it's delicious that was stuff. that was uh a jack daniels hunting with some apple cider as we know i'm a sucker for a little bit of uh, apple cider with my bourbon i also put a little twist of lemon into it did you Ooh, did you do that i did not i looked at some recipes on the line and and when i've had this before it's either you know with a twist of lemon or when we had um the drink a couple weeks back you know you had the ginger with it the uh, ginger ale with it and everything so um but I, i've had with a twist of lemon didn't have a ginger ale left in the house uh but yeah and it is delectable i've had a day man i've you know went golfing earlier uh got a new power washer you know so i power washed the back saw patio that. i saw <laughs> that why we're talking to each other how did that work out for you uh, great oh my great. gosh uh, yeah yeah wait till you see the patio it, it looks really really good <laughs> we, we are so old this yeah. is we're the target audience for the Home Depot now <laughs> on, on college game day. Like we just get a new, do, I just do, bought do, the do, damn do. thing. Yeah. I'm super excited. It was like 90 bucks and it works like a dream. I love it. I was, I was questioning your PSI uh, number, but uh, you got to <laughs> say it was strong enough. It, Cause it, I, I had to set, well, we've been thinking about getting a power washer and I was just turning into like tool time here. Um, <laughs> but uh I, I have a threshold like that that uh, was recommended to me for psi so you guys were under that threshold so i'm excited to see the results and uh and and see how it worked for you i mean home projects and and power tools go with football like lamb and tuna fish maybe <laughs> spaghetti and meatball if you're more comfortable with that reference uh but yeah it was a great day man great great little weekend we have here fall is, is really in the air got a nice yes, crisp is. in the air yes and boy is. did we not have some great games this weekend too i know we sound like a broken record but uh each week we just keep getting some uh gems some of them have been big games that we were excited for that were letdowns and others have been kind of shockers uh that you know, pleasantly surprised us mainly because we're not fans of those teams, but yeah, it's been great. Yeah. So why don't, I was I was say, why don't we, we, why don't we get to our recap here and let's start with uh, the game that we talked about last week, which was the George Jewett trophy game. And that was between Michigan and Northwestern. And honestly, it looked like uh, the result was just as we all expected. They are who we thought they were. Yes. They are who we thought they were. Yeah. Michigan looks super strong heading into this big week unlike someone else i don't think that they're looking past their opponent to the big (laughs) to the big rivalry game i think that they had their sights set on the wildcats and sights on that nice trophy which got a ton of good airtime i know i think joe posted some pictures from our account too uh, from our instagram account that looked really the trophy just looked fantastic man yeah no it, it did how how big is it? He texts us what it weighs. He's, he's watching that game. Yeah, he, he said it was ninety pounds. Uh, I I don't know how. And obviously he it was what the broadcaster said. Um, and I, I they didn't have it on the field, which I guess it was ninety pounds. I don't blame him. Um, but I, I it every picture we saw, it didn't look like it was tall enough to be ninety pounds, unless it's like made out of gold or something. I have no idea. And you have to, well, I mean, it's, it's probably, I assume it was like a, a nice pewter or something like that. And, uh, I mean, you got to think, you got to think our boy, um, uh, Spanos 
the, yeah. uh, the strength condition coach, you got to think he's disappointed that he can't get some reps in with that bad boy at 90 pounds. Oh, he, yeah. Oh, uh, he'd be loving just, just shoulder press. Yeah. Wiggle. Oh, yeah. No, no. One oh. one arm power clean. Everyone's doing a <laughs> one arm power clean with that bad boy. You know it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So that just kind of, that sets up, uh, Michigan now, um, to, to come to East Lansing with, uh, the Spartans, uh, coming off their bye, just sitting there waiting for them. So it should be a heck of a game and we'll preview that, um, later on in this episode. Uh, so why don't we move on to a couple statement wins that we saw here and Ooh, we might oh, as well just start. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'll go first. Uh, yeah. Clemson Pitt. Clemson yeah. Pitt. Uh, that game was awesome. I caught, um, really from like the second quarter on is pretty much whenever I caught it. And again, I text you guys both. It was a great, great college football Saturday because as I mentioned, I was watching the rock the other week, Die Hard was on, which was excellent. And then they rolled right to Die Hard too, which is great. So having that action movie on is just, just fantastic. The uh, football gods are blessing us. And that game was awesome. I thought Pickett looked really strong like incredibly strong, especially the dichotomy between Pickett, who wasn't getting a lot of love, you know, like he's, he's had an, he's been just okay. But then on the other side of the field is Mr. 23 ingredients, 23 flavors, DJ Uyunga Lule, who got pinched at one point and it was brought back in. Uh, but Pickett, was really putting the ball wherever he wanted to out there. Uh, hats off to the Panthers because they beat two opponents in the Tigers and the Zebras. The refs were, I mean, I've never seen, I know EJ, you, you and Joe didn't watch the game. I've never seen um, officiating where I really thought the game was fixed. Like I thought that these refs might have contacts in new Kensington in the mafia that like were trying to keep the game within the spread. You need to watch a Packers home game, dude. It well, I, I I've seen it, my friend. Oh yeah, with Joe Hayden and uh, jumping off sides allegedly yeah. uh, when they played my beloved Steelers. But no, it was honestly like it. There, uh, in the third quarter, there were two drives in a row where there were several penalties called, and some of them like they were legit penalties. But then there was like a holding call where it's like gosh, like his arms are on the inside. And yeah, I guess he did help hold him, but you can call that on 95% of the plays in college right, football. Yeah. It was terrible, but even still, even despite all that, I and, and the, the Heinz field crowd normally not very raucous during pick games. We're no. giving it to these refs, giving it to them. And, uh, I, I, I'm actually not sure if they made out Pittsburgh, not sure if they caught the flight or if they're swimming, uh, wearing cement shoes in the Monaga halo right now, but uh, it was an awesome game. Pickett was putting it wherever he won. And what's even more impressive, they lost their um, starting wide receiver to a concussion. They lost their starting running back to a concussion after one of, after that penalty, after that, uh, the holding call that I thought was BS one of the most blatant targeting calls, uh, non calls. Like I've seen way less call for targeting the running back missed the rest of the game with the concussion and they didn't call targeting. And Oh my gosh, the place was freaking out. But um, yeah, Pickett looked great. Put wherever he wanted to. And he even said, I loved at the end of the game. He said, uh, <laughs> Molly McGrath was asking like how, you know, getting ready for next week against Miami who had a big win did. Uh, and said, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have a cold one and then we'll get ready for Miami and just, <laughs> nothing to endear yourself to the people of Pittsburgh, like talk like that. So, yeah, he's, uh, he, he's just been an interesting, um, breakout player this year, because I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, he's, this is like literally his sixth year there and I've, I've watched my fair share of pit games. Cause you know, I love Pat Narduzzi, uh, the old oh, Michigan Patrick. state, uh, defensive coordinator, but I mean, Pickett's just looked like an okay college quarterback. Yeah. Like honestly, between him and Nathan Peterman, I'm sorry. Like I didn't I, up until this point, I didn't really see like a big difference. He was just fine. It, you, you can't be a, a college quarterback. You can't be a quarterback in general with the last name Pickett. You, right. you just can't, you just but can't do it all of a sudden. I mean, he's putting a resume together now that it's, you know, you, with a weak quarterback class this year. Uh, I mean, he's putting his bid up there cause he's athletic too. He's not like, you know, over the top Lamar Jackson athletic, but he's enough to extend a play and, you know, 
uh, run for a first down kind of athlete. And he has the arm strength. I think yeah. he's always had this, but something clicked over this off season. Oh, I have no idea what he's doing, but keep it up. Maybe he's having like five per man sandwiches a day and, and going to Mario's and have, you know, spin the shot wheel before games, but dude, he looks yeah. great. And the dichotomy is DJ on the other side, got benched, eventually came back in. And when he came back in through a laser, 50 yards down the field. I'm like, uh Oh, like, here we go. Like D- Dabba said something to him on the sideline. But then his throws after that, I don't know where the hell he was throwing that ball. I mean, it was, he looked terrible, but like, it, it, I, I really don't know what's going on with DJ. I, I, from seeing him play last year, uh, he definitely looked better when spelling Trevor Lawrence through the injuries, but I, Really, I pick it's the more incredible story because he has transformed. But like you said, EJ, it's kind of like Burrow. You know, he kind kind of came out of nowhere for LSU, yeah. and um, I don't the know reason I guess, why he had to transfer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we'll see, man. I mean, Miami had a nice upset over NC State. You know, I think you watched that, right, EJ? You said they're playing kind of up to the the talent. They're playing up to their talent level. Yeah, there, I right? caught like the second half of that game, and um, yeah, I mean. We can get to that in a second, but Miami's, um, yeah, they, they they have players. They don't hurt with recruits. They just haven't been able to find a coach recently that's been able to help them put it all together. And it just finally, you know, felt like it clicked for them. And dude's um, playing for his job now, too. Right, yeah. Like- yeah, it's interesting. I mean, now it's up to Pittsburgh to not have a letdown because uh, time and time again, they've had big wins even earlier this year. You know, they go into Tennessee, um, tough place to play early in the season. Tennessee still has hope, uh, come out with a convincing win, and then they, you know, lay a lay an egg at home against Western, so uh, Western Michigan. So, well, well don't uh, worry, Pitt might lose to Tennessee Tech. Oh, right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the thing is like, yeah. when's the next like FCS school or Mac school? Because they could be in some trouble. Yeah. But right. I hope I hope for their sake and our doozy's sake, this is the year, right? This is the year to make it. Now, will they have a strong enough um, schedule in the ACC, even if they stay one loss to make the playoff? Probably not. But can they get themselves into a Fiesta Bowl or something and make a, a real... Yeah real yeah. one like a real nice season for I, mean, I mean what the, the rankings just came out i think pits at 17 so it's like they're still given only one loss like i, yeah. I feel like they're better I, I haven't looked at all the rankings too much in depth to see like who do i think they should jump but i mean ultimately I they're gonna have to beat nc state they're gonna have to beat wake forest and maybe those two will be enough uh those are the only really ranked teams left i think in the acc so um maybe that's enough to get them that's why i feel like they're just gonna kind of be top 10 but yeah. fringe, but you know what? They got to finish the season off. And like I said, if they get to a New Year's Six Bowl game, um, you know that's that's, that's something. A, that's to a be, win, baby. Hey, New Year's Six said. Bowl game in icy right. light. That's that's a damn good. It's a damn good way of ringing the New Year. All right. So another statement uh, win here was uh, Oregon went on the road to UCLA as a road dog, and uh, you know it was a very close game and. They keep overcoming their injuries and uh, stacking these wins and, you know, really keeping their playoff hope alive. I mean, overcoming the injuries is incredible. And it was game day was electric. That was an awesome environment. And really, if these guys get healthy, they're going to be a big problem for a lot of people. Like, I really think that like Oregon, you know, their offensives in the past, I think have been a bit more impressive. Like now it's their defense. that's really shining, but (laughs) although, the stat line that we talk is uh, spoiler for, or I guess not spoiler, but a peek behind the curtain for the fans here. We watched the extended highlights on ESPN just right before we recorded here. And the stat line uh, for the running back with <laughs> eight carries in the third quarter, he had eight carries, 14 yards and four touchdowns. And I think EJ, you said it's the first time someone had touchdown, like four touchdowns on consecutive possessions. Yeah, I don't even think it's possessions. I think it's like consecutive touches. C- it carries or, right, right. Possession yeah, consecutive ball, carries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. yeah. Carries, carries right. which is yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, but that just shows you how wild of a game it is because with only 14 yards or whatever, it's not like he broke a couple 90 yard runs. Yeah. Uh, 75 yard runs, right? It was a couple of crazy special teams plays that shortened the field uh for Oregon. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I've always kind of liked the ducks. Uh, I've, quack, quack. You know, I have some quack, friends quack, quack, that, that are quack, duck quack, fans. Mr. And... Ducksworth, quack, quack. 
I would love for them to be in the playoff over Ohio State any day. So oh, yeah, well, same. I don't, I don't know if the the committee will do the right thing there, but do the right thing, out. committee. Like Spike then, Lee says, do the right thing. We had a couple of big upsets, and we kind of have to start upsets. with this one here. Um, Illinois, after <laughs> after fighting Bielma, Illini. right after a Bielman like basically told his offensive lineman to f off that week and said that literally all of them were terrible, like almost word for word. It was pretty crazy. I've never really seen. I'm sure that was tame considering what yeah. B- Brett Bielma said to them behind the scenes. I mean, Brett Bielma's a big guy. Like, yeah. I mean, he's a, yeah. he's a hog himself, you know, right. like he, he can't be having the little hogettes just no. acting this way. And he, he challenged him and boy, they respond. They went to happy Valley and beat Penn state. And I'll tell you what, I, I took the under here and I, I don't know <laughs> this. This was just like, I should have put money on a Powerball because they hit the under, which was at 46 and a half. And they had nine, nine overtimes. Like, what? Could you imagine if me telling you before a game, hey, this game's going to go to nine overtimes and the audacity to bet the under? Like, I didn't, I totally forgot that they get to a point in, in when you get to so many overtimes where you start doing two point conversions. Yeah. Cause I didn't watch it. I caught the highlights and I'm like, why, what? Why, why, like, why is the score like this? Like, why is it like who scored two points? It's like, oh yeah, it's two point conversions after yeah. a certain point. I think it's after the third overtime. But what's crazy is that, that they probably went, I mean, I don't know exactly, but I, they had to have gone at least six overtime overtimes without scoring both teams. Yeah, they, they like, did. Yeah. They both scored in the eighth overtime <laughs> to get to 18, 18. And then Illinois scored in the ninth overtime. It's like, that's. That's insane. That's really hard to do. Yeah. You is. start at like the 25 yard line. Like you're already in field goal range. What? Well, on the, yeah. But when you're doing two point conversions, you're at like the two, like it's, that's incredibly hard to do. Wait, to not wait. score. Yeah, yeah. But I think you only do the two point conversions after you score a touchdown. You don't just go, they don't just line them up at the two. No, I think they line them up at the two. Oh, well, then that's got to be because it went, it was 16 overtime. 16. It was, hold on. Hold on. All right. Because people, they, people are losing their minds at home like you idiots. Well, we didn't watch the game. Who, who thought it would be this impressive? No, it was uh, here because, yeah, it was at the end of the second. At the end of the fourth quarter, it was 13 th- – or wait, hold on. And the fourth quarter, it was 10-10. And then at the end of the first overtime, it was 13-13. And then it got to 16-16. So they both kicked field goals. But, yeah, I mean, it ended when with them – When did they score the two – then they, there must be a new rule then because normally you yeah, go – Yeah, you, you just do two-point conversions. At what point? One I think overtime. at the sixth overtime is sixth where overtime. Hey Siri, when do you start? Do, how bad do you have to be? They, they just <laughs> line you up in the two point conversion on the people. The people know this, but now we have to. Okay, here we go. So I'll just say while you're looking this up, Mike, I mean, that this essentially just ends Penn State season because now they don't have a real hope to win the Big Ten. No real hope to make a playoff. They're definitely not the second best team in the East after that. Um, not without Clifford. So I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So beginning with the third overtime period, teams will begin to run alternating two point conversion plays instead of offensive possessions. So they both kicked the field goals and then it was just oh back gosh. to back to back two point conversion. And it took them till the ninth overtime to get to there. score. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, there you go, folks. It was a but miserable I game. I don't think it ends it for Penn State. Like, I think it maybe ends their their playoff hopes. Mike, they lost to Illinois at home and scored 18 points. They're not beating Michigan or Michigan State. Unless Clifford comes back. Man, unless I, Clifford, that's the thing. If Clifford comes back. Maybe, maybe, but that's bad. Like, Illinois is bad bad and you're at oh yeah home, they're bad bad happy yeah. valley I well mean, what's, I guess what's clifford's they, timeline i have no idea i really don't i don't know if they were looking ahead it doesn't matter like you still shouldn't lose 18 to 20 it'd be one thing if like illinois scored 40 
and just had like the game of their life. I tell you what, though, if there was a time for James Franklin to dip out to warmer pastures, oh, this is it. He gone. He, he gone. All right. Enough about those guys. Uh, let's talk about another massive letdown in the Big Ten. Wisconsin versus number 25, Purdue. Purdue, the spoiler makers trying to make a run, make a name for themselves. And they were so who fast. we thought they were. They were who we thought they were. I, I, yeah, I mean, I think that last week's you have in the notes here was last week's win and aberration. I think so completely. I mean, yeah. I think that they played really well. Spotlight got too bright and that's it. Cause if you go and you have that upset that you did last week and then you come out and you do this against Wisconsin who stinks at home. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. No good. Um, hopefully Purdue continues on the downside in two weeks because Spartans have to go to West Lafayette. Um, so another uh, upset here, number 14, Coastal Carolina went on a weird Wednesday um, night game at the Rock in Appalachian State. And uh, yeah, couldn't, couldn't come away with the win. Yeah, of course, because I bet on that game. Also, uh, before we get to betting talk, I will say um, I'm just going to stop betting noon games because you know what? I actually I did a test this weekend. Um, I lost every single bet I placed at noon, but I only placed three bets at noon. Only a few. I did. I just didn't like it that much. But then none of my parlays throughout the day. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. One of my parlays didn't. My big parlay, my big money line parlay, where anything can happen um included a noon game and that lost because the noon game was, it was a massive upset um but yeah 3 30 7 o'clock i'm all good i'm up i'm up <laughs> like five units after this weekend and it's all from 3 30 and later so i just need to stop at noon games and we're we're good we're good to go I mean, that said, I'm still going to bet some noon games but you know you gotta have a nooner in your system because what if what if i don't bet it and it That's hits. True. Yeah, That's true. But yeah, um, no, uh, Oklahoma State, Iowa State. That's what we're on now, right? That's what we're talking about. I'll get off my my whole gambling tirade, and we'll oh, get we were on Coastal Carolina and Appalachian State. Oh, but we Coastal can, Carolina, we can tra- Appalachian we can State. Transition. Yeah. I mean, that's all right. No, really Coastal Carolina. They let me down too. Yeah. The Chanticleers, the the Fighting Chickens, have been a uh, money favorite for me on, yeah, on Wednesday nights, but. I had a bad Could, weeknights, oh, bad yeah. weeknights too. Couldn't, couldn't get it done. Then we had, I mean, this is, I guess, technically an upset, but technically not, uh, was number eight, Oklahoma state going to, uh, unranked Iowa state, but Iowa state was favored by, I think, like you said, t- a touchdown. Seven. At home. Yeah. Yeah. Touchdown favor at home. Yep. Uh, so Vegas didn't believe in them. And, uh, that, that belief, um, you know, was, was well-founded was well-founded. Yeah. Because, Oklahoma State lost a close one. It was a very close game. They had a chance. They had the ball uh, with uh, a chance to win it. Two minutes left in the game, and uh, just you know, eventually had a turnover on downs, and that was it. So that kind of really ends their hope of getting to. Uh, What's Iowa Big State 12. right now? Where where are they in the Big Twelve? What's their I'm not confidence? sure. I mean, they're two losses, right? Only two. Lo- oh, no, three losses. Uh, no, no, sorry, two losses because two they, losses. They Baylor and. Uh, Iowa. So, I mean, they're only a one loss team in the big 12. So they can still make it happen. Yeah. And they haven't played Oklahoma yet. Speaking of Oklahoma, talk about a close one. So Kansas <laughs> shut out in the first half, Kansas, <laughs> Kansas, uh, department of athletic likes or whoever sent an email to the student body saying, Hey, student body, uh, season ticket holders, uh, just in case you haven't used your tickets, uh, your team is winning right now, 14 to nothing at halftime against number four ranked Oklahoma. Uh, get your happy ass down to the stadium in case you're not here because we might actually do something. And I got to say, uh, Kansas, their uniforms look super clean. I didn't watch much of that game. I tuned in at about halftime. Uh, actually, past, uh, partway through the third quarter is when I tuned in. Oklahoma, my other comeback. Caleb Williams reminds me a lot of Jalen Hurts. Like they announcers kept talking about like his strong legs and lower body, which is a Jalen Hurts thing. But like even his style and the way he moves reminds me of Jalen a little bit. But I gotta say, <laughs> it was a close one for Oklahoma, and it was 
almost done for them if not for one play which i text you guys and said i don't know if you're allowed to do that and even the announcer was like <laughs> i don't know if those are the rules but uh it was a run play caleb williams hands it off and and the running back starts getting driven back he's sure the line to gain he's getting driven backwards and caleb williams just goes up to the running back and he's like standing in front of him so downfield and takes the ball out of his hands and then goes to the first down. Now, announcers were saying, well, forward progress was stopped. They should have won the whistle, but there was no whistle. It was just one of those things that's, as I hate Oklahoma with all my heart and soul, it makes me feel like Oklahoma is getting away with cheating, even though technically <laughs> it's not cheating. Like that should not have been allowed. You should have lost the game, but Caleb Williams, it won't make that play. Really heads up play, like great play by him. And, uh, you know, got the first down from there. It was pretty much all she wrote. They kept, they went down, they scored, and that was about it for Kansas. Yeah. And listen, this is uh, Lincoln Riley's um, audition for LSU. Cause I mean, I'm going to tell you what, that LSU coach coaching position, I mean, that, that, uh, that is Lincoln director, Riley being, is he being, I don't know. All I know is that dude has a, uh, you know, a habit of trying to make a big, splash like I, I don't think this is going to be uh under the radar coach o. does he have I, connections to lsu or what well uh, the, coach o connection, had connections so I, th that right. was yeah but coach o was no one right like well i mean he's not no one he's was well known just he wasn't someone who's had a lot of success he was right. he was the guy that was the assistant coach that took over for, the head coach got fired and he took over as interim head coach and did well. Yeah. That's Coach O up until I was LSU. Lincoln Riley, though, the, does he have connections to to LSU at all or just? Nope. Just the fact that LSU can pay him more than Oklahoma, which sounds surprising, but LSU is one of those uh, those programs. You know, like I said, like USC and LSU are top three programs when it comes to what they can offer a coach and It'll be interesting to see who they pull. I really don't think they're going to pull. I think they're going to shoot for the the stars. Like maybe it's James Franklin. Um, you know, I mean, maybe they can get Bob Stoops out of the uh, out of the studio. But I think they're going to shoot for it. LSU has great. Well, the state of Louisiana has a bunch of great high school players that want to stay and want to play at LSU. In fact, I remember. Um, oh gosh, who was it? Was it Landon Collins? I think it was Landon Collins. Um, not totally sure. I forget. But it was definitely a, a secondary player at Alabama who at the uh, McDonald's All-Star game, like he's from LSU and he put on the tide or he declared for Alabama like partway through the game. Yeah. His mom was sitting next to him. His mom was livid. Oh, she yeah, was I, I remember that. I, I think it that. was Landon Collins. Okay. Yeah. I do but remember that. She was so, she said, she's like, cause uh, the reporter asked the mom, like, how you feel about this? She's like, we're, we're going to go home and talk about this. <laughs> like, this is not, she was heated, but like, that's, I mean, that is the dedication that folks in Louisiana have to LSU. And I mean, it's uh, just, it, it, it's a great program, but like, I wonder, does Lincoln Riley gain that much by going to LSU? I mean, if it's more of a payday, I, I don't know that. How much more of a payday is it, EJ? Because we were talking about the top paid coaches. What's Coach LSU o was compared to? Second, I, I mean, I think where LSU is now doesn't necessarily mean where it could be, right? Yeah. I think Coach O was making seven mil. Seven mil is usually like the threshold, right? Above yeah. seven and you're in Nick Saban category. Um, so I, I Lincoln Riley is still probably a top 10, top 15, definitely. But it, it, that's the kind of thing. Like if LSU is ready to throw eight, nine, 10 at a coach, I think it could be something like that. I think their next hire, whoever it may be. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I don't think they're going to coming off this national championship. Like I, I think, especially with Texas, Oklahoma coming into the conference, like I, I think they're going to, they're going to look for that. Yeah. Big guy. But does Lincoln Riley want to leave? I mean, he has a good thing going. I, I, I don't know. Ish. Yeah, that's, that's an okay true. thing going. That hey, that's true because we just saw the rankings. I was surprised as anyone else, considering in my mind, Alabama stinks. They're terrible. They're not a good team. Uh, and they're now number three, whereas Oklahoma got bumped down. Uh, I mean, this, for, yeah, this Oklahoma team in the SEC West this year, 
probably has three or four losses. Yeah, easy. I mean, they're losing to Ole Miss. They're losing to Wu Pig Sui. Yeah. They're definitely losing to Bama, yep. maybe to Auburn, depending on where it's at. Yep. Like they they have been squeaking past some weak competition in the Big 12. Which is reflected in the rankings. Right. Alabama yeah. leapfrogged them with yeah. a embarrassing win against Tennessee. <laughs> and it, it was an embarrassing win. But um no, that's Man, I don't know. If See, I, I just, I, I was just throwing it out there. I don't think there's any rumors, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. You're gonna start. You're, you're breaking news here. If, breaking if there news. There is a current coach that hasn't been the uh, famous. I would even say, dare I say, the only thing that makes me hesitate is because of the strong ties he has to his school. But like, is Dabo gonna bail? Would Dabo oh. go? Would he? Would he take a USC is Brett, LSU? Is job? Brett Venables gonna right. bail? Right. Finally, those two seem to be like this could be that breaking point for them. I mean, they stink. Point. Clemson stinks. Yeah. I, I did. I bet a little bit on Pitt. Uh, the only thing that was backing me off from betting a lot is because Pitt has played spoiler for Clemson in the past. And I didn't yeah. want that. to. I did figure like this would be the year where it comes back and bites them. Yeah. Uh, but Miami now has been concerned for the same reason. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, that could be it. That could be, I don't know, it. Man. I, yeah, he's not going pro not to say again, like the only, I, I know that he like grew up in that program. I get it. Yeah. Uh, but mm, I don't know. Yeah. And s- know. speaking of LSU and Ole Miss, Ole Miss boy, they made a good case for old Arch Manning to, uh, to come to Oxford this weekend. Yeah. yeah we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Five Pretty funny. They the retired line. Eli's Jersey the same weekend. He had his visit. What are the odds? not a surprise i think they blatantly <laughs> like i don't think lane's even trying to hide that oh no no i do love it because we're in we're in the season where you start starting to track planes you're tracking right. the lsu plane i yeah. think it went to florida this week i don't know who was looking at it. hopefully not dan mullen Jeez, <laughs> man. come on all right so why don't we uh get to just a reminder here with the betting again uh guys please a- as you're hearing especially if you're a noon football betting. oh if you have some locks at noon <laughs> like, call me up call me here's my number call me <laughs> not even maybe call me right now um uh, so please send us your bets again uh we will shout out the the bets that are uh successful um sharing is caring guys we, sharing we is it. caring i definitely need it after today so oh yeah please, you had a rough nfl help. sunday huh pal terrible I had a decent saturday bad Sunday. Got, got to try and make it up. Um, all right. So uh, quickly here, what are uh, some games that you are looking forward to this weekend? In addition to the Heartland trophy and the Paul Bunyan trophy game? Yeah, we have, we are actually very blessed with the great weekend because I, I don't like, uh, listen, I know Ohio state's been stomping on people, but I think Penn state can at least cover this weekend. Uh, but outside of that, I am super pumped. World's largest outdoor cocktail party, Florida, Georgia. Let's go, boys. Great future game. episode. F- oh, yes. Oh. Future episode alert. Why is it called that? Well, Mike, I don't want to hear it because <laughs> we're going to have to tease that for a future season. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm super excited for that game. That's my biggest one. What, what's up with you, pal? Well, I, I mean, I know what you're looking forward to. With, of course. Yes. I, I said beside Michigan, Michigan State. Yes. Iowa, yes. Wisconsin. It has to be again. And I, I'm disappointed now. And I bet you ABC is too. Um, yeah. <laughs> number probably 13 ish is what I would guess. I didn't, I didn't actually check today. Um, Penn State versus. Uh, number what? Top oh no, top uh, twenty. Penn State's twenty. Oof, oof. Yeah. Okay. Number twenty. Penn State at uh number five. Ohio State at night at the shoe. Penn State can't score. Ohio State's averaged like fifty points the last three games. Yeah. I I think while Penn State's defense is is good, I have a feeling this is gonna uh be reminiscent of maybe Iowa Iowa State where. Penn State puts up a fight, um, but the defense is just going to be on the field for like 75% Ohio State's of the been playing games. playing too well. Yeah, Ohio State's been playing too well. I think yeah. that their defense is caught up, and I think because Penn State's offense is really struggling without Clifford, I think this could be bad quick. Um, yeah. 
And yeah, ABC screwed up on this one. They should have they, taken Michigan, Michigan State. They really should have. And Fox we, needs to stop with their stupid World Series coverage and allow <laughs> a night game in October. We got some we got some good ones here, man. We got uh so this week we got outside of that, so Auburn Ole Miss is at seven o'clock at Auburn. That should be interesting. Number 10 Ole Miss. They've broken into the into the top 10 against number 18 Auburn. So that should be good. And then also wait one pal, you know how I love my, uh, my West coast lullabies. Yeah. And normally I look to the PAC 12 for that, but we got Fresno state, San Diego state at 10 30. Oh boy. You better believe I'm turning that one on that. That's cool. It's San Diego state's favored by one point right now. Is that, and they're playing home. In, is that bet already in your, your bet slip? Oh, I have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm probably just going to watch it. Well, we'll see. We're going to see how the day goes, but I'm going to watch that one and enjoy it, dude. That That's San Diego State, by the way. Clean ass helmets. Clean helmets. They look good. So they got all, that red with the Aztec symbol. Looks oh, good. 100%. I, I'm, I'm going to challenge something you said, though, um, to, just to just to lay this out for the listeners here. Um, Mike and his his lovely wife are hosting an awesome pre Halloween brunch at their house. Okay. And this thing's starting at noon. He, we have a great crew of people. We have Michigan, Michigan state. Like we've talked about, um, we're going to have Penn state, Ohio state. Oh yeah. Beers are going to be drank one or I'm, two. I'm going to question whether or not you're going to be up at 10 30 to watch this game. I'm challenging that fact. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's a real good question. It depends, dude. It totally depends. We'll we'll see. I might challenge you being up for Penn State, Ohio State, depending on how well or poorly. There's it goes a for reason me. why I call those Pac-12 10-30 games a lullaby. <laughs> There's a reason why. In fact, I think we were at a bar one time where I almost went to sleep because the game was on. And I'm like, well, it's time for bed. The 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 Pac-12 game's on time for bed. But that no, should be a good one. I I would love to be able to stay up and watch some of those late some of those West Coast games more because they are good. That's They're like great. why, like the fact that the UCLA line was my like UCLA was minus three against Oregon. That shouldn't be a surprise if you watch it enough. So. Nope. Yep. Uh, it should be a, another great slate. Maybe Penn state pull something out of their hat. I, I just, I don't think so. Um, I no, think this no is going to get no bad, chance. but yeah, we'll see. Well, well pal, are, are we gonna, I know we're about to, we're kind of at the end here. Yeah. Then we're getting into the episode. I sure. would like to fix myself another cocktail. If we Ooh. could uh, pause it real quick. You are you saying you'd like to take a break? I would, in, in honor of our, our good friend Whiskey Tang Joe. I would love to make myself another cocktail here in in his honor. So, let's do it. Let's uh, take a quick break, and we will be right back. Smooches. Welcome back, everyone. Mike, is the drink refreshed? It is. It is refreshed, and uh, I'm loving it. Oh, I you're loving, loving it. it. I mean, I'm loving it. I could, you know what? <laughs> I'm loving it so much. I could absolutely go for a Big Mac right now and some, fr- oh gosh, McDonald's fries. I mean, for me, as you know, EJ, what's the this. best? What's my favorite fast food restaurant? Wendy's. Yes. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's incredible. There's a fly. <laughs> can't catch it okay it's gone uh but love wendy's love wendy's breakfast especially the sausage egg and cheese croissant is fantastic i highly recommend no free ads but free ads get yourself some wendy's my friends also and, uh, what was the junior bacon cheeseburger that wasn't junior i think that was just a dave single or something like that i don't know they changed the name but that was good right that was fantastic yeah all right, so why don't we get to our trophy today and the rivalry that is behind it. So today we're going to talk about the Heartland Trophy. This trophy is given uh, to the winner between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Wisconsin Badgers. Would you like to hear some fun facts? I, You know me. I'm a sucker for fun facts. Great. So here's my first fun fact here. Wisconsin was a founding member of the Big Ten. Back in 1896. I would not have guessed that the Big Ten was around since 1896. Can you name the other founding members? I will say it is one, two, three, four, five. Nope. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Math is okay. Hard. Six so other members. Wisconsin's one. Correct. Six others. Iowa is presumably not one. No. Uh, Michigan. Yes. Uh, Illinois. Yes. Nebraska. No. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that's one strike. Uh, all right. So you, you got the count. I got the strike count. So I, I got three with one strike. Um, not Michigan State because they were the stayers and fawns and all that good stuff. Uh, Penn State? No. That's two strikes. Oh, not looking good for me. Um, Northwestern? Yes. Nice. Nice. I'm still alive. Illinois? Yes. Oh, I got one more. Okay. Um, oh, I lied. I can't do math. You have two more. I'm sorry. I have two more. There were seven? Yep. yep. Oh, jeez. So one of these is not a member anymore. So you're not going to get that one, but there is still a current one. Indiana. No. Uh, the other school, uh, the other school from the state of Indiana. Well, well Purdue. Oh, spoiler makers. Wow. So the founding members of the Big Ten were Chicago University, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Purdue, and Northwestern. Mm. And three years later, Iowa and Indiana were added. And then Ohio State joined in 1912. Okay. Oh, okay. The Battle of 1912. And then Michigan, or excuse me, Chicago terminated its football program in 1939 and then eventually left the Big Ten in 1946. And that, op- and that opened up the spot for that Michigan Agricultural College. Or the, at that the Mighty time, Fawns. The Mighty Fawns. Michigan State joined in 1949. And then there wasn't another new member until the formerly independent Penn State joined in 1990. Penn State was in. Whoa. What? Yes, they were independent prior. Until to- 1990? I don't know if they were independent the entire time, but in 1990, right, or 89, before they joined, they were independent. Wow. I did not know that. I mean, I was born born in 89, so, you know. Yeah, and Nebraska was a really poor choice. I didn't want to say that to you, but I will now. They were in the Big 12 for forever. I I, I mean, I gave it a shot. I, I Well, I didn't know exactly like where they... I thought that they were... We're in the Big Ten before the Big Twelve, and then back to I. I didn't. Okay, that's that's fair. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Nebraska joined in 2011, and that's when we had the real the, the two divisions, which were the leaders. And so the I legends. I thought that the the Nebraska was in the Big Ten before the Big Twelve. That didn't happen. No, that's like it's Mandela affecting me. I could have sworn that they were in the Big Ten. And then the last two members joined in 2014, and that would be Rutgers and Maryland for their media markets. And that's why the Big Ten Network makes big money, because while people always misconstrue viewership with money, that's not the case. Because I will tell you, I will tell you, once upon a time, my dad and I had to go to a Permantes to watch the Red River rivalry because Pitt was playing Furman. That is a true story that happened. <laughs> yes. A uh, pits pits interesting too, because I don't think the ACC network is in Pittsburgh. Like I, I was talking to my uh, father-in-law about that. It's like a weird hook on who has Pittsburgh um, or like the outskirts of Pittsburgh. It's not as clear cut as you'd think because. Of, oh, so it's strong... not in the city proper, but it's. Like in the I, I can't outskirts. remember exactly how it was, but it was it wasn't what you'd expect. Penn State's Big Ten market really. I don't know. Latrobe Le- definitely has the ACC network. I I know that for a fact, Jack, okay. because I had to go. You're, you're on to, it all the time. I had to go to a Permanis to watch Texas and Oklahoma because Pitt was playing Furman. There you go. So, um, yeah. So the the. the People don't realize that when you you pay for cable, you have to have certain channels, 
And so that's how the Big Ten makes their money in New York and in uh, D.C. area, not because Rutgers and Maryland have these rabid football fans that watch. It's because people that just buy cable have to pay for the Big Ten. Network. You know, that's my biggest question about Texas going to the SEC is because Texas has their own football network. So yeah, they but, had to have sorted that out with the SEC before. Well, I don't even know if it's their own football network, but it's their no, own it TV is. network. Oh, yeah, it, yeah. it's just it's, football. It's not oh, just. Oh, ooh, that's a good question. It's probably just their school. It's probably a sports network. I would imagine. Yeah. But yeah, the they don't have a gymnastics the program like Oklahoma, but, you know, they right. do. OK. And the SEC doesn't have enough big media markets. They might now with Austin, but I mean, really, it's just hot Atlanta. So the SEC network doesn't make nearly as much. How good um, is Welcome to Atlanta, by the way? Like that <laughs> song by that came on my lifting playlist the other day. I was like, ooh, this is a heater. Jermaine Dupree and Luda like that. That came on. And it, it hit me right somewhere in the in the heart. What a heater of a song. Not in the plums, in the heart. Oh, in the heart. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That one hit me in the heart. All right. Well, sorry, listeners, for, uh, you know, that little side rant, but you learned a little something. No, that's why TV that's why rights. you come here. You come here yeah. for the side rants, baby. All right, Mike, give me your first impressions on this bad boy. What do you think <laughs> of this trophy? Yeah. Well, well, EJ. Uh, so what reminds me a little bit of is the Wall Street Bull, which I'm wondering if they took it from the wall street bull because um so okay for the listeners it's like a big hefty wooden box with a couple of plaques attached to the side with a massive golden bull on top and it looks somewhat like the wall street bull which makes me think it was modeled after the wall street bull because i know that our good friends um for the um iowa iowa state what is the name of that trophy? Why is it escaping me right now? I can't think about it. What Cy-Hawk. is it? Cyhawk. They took the uh, the Heisman Trophy as inspiration for the initial one. And this reminds me of the Wall Street Bull. So they could have taken inspiration from that as well. But it's like, it's interesting because it is a huge wooden box. I mean, the wooden box is taller than the bull If itself. you told me this was 90 pounds, I'd believe you. It looks like it weighs about a thousand pounds. Yeah. I mean, it's being hoisted by multiple players on both sides, almost like not to take a dark turn, but it's like a casket. On. I was going like, to say it looks like a yeah, casket. It's like you're like Paul Bears carrying. Yeah, because they are carrying it on their shoulders like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Well, let me tell you a little bit more. Yeah, Enjoy please do. More? It also right. looks like I gotta say that the bull has his one his front right paw up in the air and he's like eating the grass, which is there's there is no grass. I mean, if there were grass there, he'd be eating it, but it's kind of what it looks like. So, so my interpretation is more <laughs> that that's that's quite an interpretation. My idea is more along the lines of he's ready, getting ready to charge and he's lifting his his hoof to like, you know, on cartoons, how they always like stomp, you know, do that mm-hmm, circular mm-hmm. stomp because his head's face down with his horns up. I'm more inclined to think he's ready to, to charge than no, to me. Grazing. I'm thinking he's he's eating and he's like, <laughs> hold on, fam. Hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done eating. I'm not done. I I, I got five more burritos. Just hold on five more burritos okay he went from grass to burritos i have burritos downstairs so that's what i'm thinking about right now <laughs> all right so let me uh, tell you a little bit more about this the, the history of the rivalry itself so the first matchup was in 1894 and wisconsin won 44 to nothing um and actually wisconsin won the first six games in this series so it was pretty lopsided to begin with but the total uh series right now is Wisconsin leads at 48 wins to 44 losses to two ties. That feels right. So it is dead even. And a lot of people kind of, um, this is similar, uh, to Nebraska and Minnesota in the sense that this wasn't considered a rivalry until about the eighties because Iowa went unbeaten in 17 of 18 games. And the only, the, the other game in that was a tie. Yeah. So in the eighties and the nineties, so this is what really uh, sparked the rivalry. So I don't think very, very many people considered it that until Iowa went on that winning streak. And then ever since it's been pretty even 
um, yeah, yeah. since then. But it, it, I mean, to me, just taking sock of the rivalry now, like that seems right to me. Like it yeah. should be even. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost dead even, which I think makes it one of the best rivalries, definitely in the big 10, arguably um, in all of college football, because of how even it is, um, how important the games are usually for both teams. Um, and they're usually pretty good, pretty good schools. Like they're very rarely do you get a year where they're both down typically yeah. either one's yeah. up more than likely both are, you know, pretty good yeah. uh, fighting yeah. for that big 10 West uh, championship. So the history of the trophy. So while this history, uh, while the history of the rivalry is over a hundred years old, the story of the trophy actually began in 2004. Oh, yes. That looks like an old ass trophy. Okay. All right. Wait <laughs> on me, pal. Wait so, on if me. I, so if I'm being honest with you, I was kind of disgusted when I realized that like 2004 was almost 20 years ago now. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah. Don't <laughs> like it. Don't like it one bit. So when I took a look back, there were some actually pretty noteworthy events. I'm really surprised uh, that happened during that year. So will you join me as we reminisce about 2004? Oh, yeah, I love 2004, dude. Let's do it. So the New England Patriots defeated the Carolina Panthers at Super Bowl 38. Well, I'm out. See ya. <laughs> but that wasn't the most memorable thing about that game. This was the Janet Jackson nip slip halftime show where were you when it happened uh in my living room family's house and yeah just uh caught a caught a glimpse of a titty there that was uh that was nice uh, i was in the kitchen making food had no idea it happened until the next day <laughs> really Completely well yeah you didn't have twitter nope Back yeah. turned to the TV, wasn't in front of it. Could you imagine no Twitter? Uh, that's one of those things where if Twitter was around, yeah, it'd be a big deal. No, I saw it, saw it live with my parents, but like, honestly, it was one of those things where it's like, I wasn't sure. What yeah, I was going to say, saw. did you know? Yeah, exactly. Did you know? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't because she had like that piercing, like a massive piercing, like on her tit. And like, also, Justin Timberlake just throwing Janet right under that bus when it's absolutely <laughs> his fault that that all happened. So, uh, I mean, kudos to JT for keeping his career on track, but old Janet, I mean, she was in the star of the night professors too, the clumps. And uh, from there, it really all went down, down. Yeah. For her. That happens today. JT's done. So, Oh, for sure. Canceled immediately. Done. Doesn't yeah. matter if it was planned or not planned. Done. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Fried. Yeah. All right. Another cool one here. Um, or uh, I mean, somber, but I, I appreciate that they uh, bring it up and, and recognize uh, this. But Pat Tillman, the former NFL oh, yeah. player who was enlisted in the U.S. Army, who quit um, football to serve his country um, after 9-11, passed away uh, in Afghanistan. He was killed in action. Um, and I, I just always think it's pretty awesome um, when they recognize him, especially the Cardinals. Uh, you know, I feel like there isn't a lot of like rich history with the Cardinals um, outside of their one Super Bowl run. Um, but Pat Tillman, they always do a really good job about that. And especially yeah, with agreed. the salute to service, they always yeah, yeah. highlight him and um, it's just a great story. And I, yeah. I can't believe that. Well, not, that not a, not a great story, but yeah. Yeah. Great. Like great that they honor him. Yeah. Great story right. that he left football. To, Let's clarify. Let's right. not get canceled. Like JT. Let's great, clarify. We're not happy that Pat Tillman. No, it, but, I meant great story that he left the NFL to, uh, to defend his country is, yeah. is a good story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. This is also an interesting one too. I mean, I guess at the time, sorry to, date myself here or to be super young or old to people but at 14 i didn't realize all this stuff was going on but the final episode of friends aired on nbc yep that drew an estimated 66 million viewers in north america and guess how much advertisers had to pay for a 30 second ad during that episode well the cast was getting like 10 mil an episode like each person was getting 10 mil an episode so I so mean, advertisers 
to get a spot. This is like Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing a mil. Cool mil. Two mil. Really? Two mil for a 30 second ad to get on during that final episode. Which stunk. I mean, well, the, the <laughs> last had to wrap seasons, it up. It's I mean, it's friends. His one. Yeah, it, it's it's a yeah, it's an establishment. Uh, another cool thing is the, the dedication of the National World War II Memorial here uh, in D.C. Uh, oh, yeah, dedicated yeah, yeah. In 2004. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I didn't uh, make my first trip to D.C. until I was in college and I only came quickly uh, because my buddy at the time was going to Russia uh, and Mongolia on a, and China on a vacation and he needed to get oh good a, classic vacation spot out the, of mongolia yeah the trans-siberian railroad is what he took damn what was do you have any more fun facts about 2004 oh yeah t- ton okay um, okay but it's just to say that was kind of that was kind of yeah. cool um he was english so russia actually oh. granted him um uh a visa unlike if you're american so Ronald Reagan, the 40th president of the United States, died at his home yep. in Bel Air at the age of 93. Um, I don't really remember that, to be honest with you, but I I do. I wasn't really much on like the news or current affairs at 14. <laughs> well, I, I'm a year older than you. So, you know, I was oh, actually a so 15 year old here. Well, was... I was in a journalism class. That was, oh, So that okay. was so for me, you were a freshman in high school. Yeah. Were you nine through 12 in high school? Yeah. So we were junior high, senior high. So seven through nine was junior high and 10 through 12 was senior. So I love 2004, 2005 is one of the best like time. I look back very fondly. In fact, I was Googling a couple things here. Because I remember 50 Cent dropped The Massacre, which was one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, I had my first, like, real, like, real girlfriend around that time. So, like, that kind of, like, sticks out to me, too, uh, as my wife sits, like, two feet away from me. I, I'm sorry. This is the first time she realized I dated other people before her. Uh, but, like, <laughs> I, I, we had a great – our college basketball team was so good. So, we had, like, a really – not college, high school basketball team really really good so like i had a great time being a part of that team um yeah i just i really loved it dude i 2004 2005 is a real sweet spot for me there's a lot of like outside of the massacre i feel like there's a lot of other good rap songs out then too and uh yeah i just i i adored it man it was a lovely time in my life i enjoyed the hell out yeah of it. i think the the carter one of the carters were out that year too two threes uh, i remember um it being very popular with my friends in high school i think it might have yeah the carter 2 came out well at the end of 2005 so the okay. carter came out probably before that but the carter 2 was the end of 2005 oh nelly sweat suit came out at the end of 2004 and that uh, driving so that was great because we listened to sweat during basketball practice in 2004 2005 and then we listened to suit on the drive home which had uh like i said first relationship first breakup so all in my head by nelly and tim mcgraw was a big song big breakup song for me (laughs) big breakup song for me uh good times good times. great times man And, and that was a hell of an album i don't think anyone's done anything like that since nelly with we thought that was the future sweatsuit was going to be the do you remember did you listen to sweatsuit ej uh i can't say that i did i probably listened to like songs i don't know that i listened to like the actual so, album all the way through. so it was sweat was one album which featured like heart of a champion and all kinds of good stuff like that and then suit had like my place over and over um like all all kinds of you know, like softer songs. So it was yeah. like he had two minds about himself. And I think also Kanye dropped cult, cult dropout at that time. Maybe. Yeah, I think. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. February 10th, 2004, college dropout. So that's where we got slow jams. One of the, uh, that song still like, I mean, college dropout is a great album but slow jams oh right you want to talk about in the ticker 
right right <laughs> in the old heart there are you gonna be say that you're gonna be said you want some marvin right, gay i'm, I'm gonna, some I'm gonna save the listeners here little anita let's start party up right I got, I got five more five more okay things. there's, there's right. a lot this is a big one i i, yeah, I had go to for cut it, it short go for it, it was, go for it it was great spider-man 2 arguably one of the best mm. of the the trilogy yes. and we're about to get theaters we're about to get no way home which yes will have yes spoiler alert it's gonna have all three spider-man yeah, and it'll have Doc Ock. It'll be great. Uh, the Boston Red Sox win the World Series for the yes. first time since 1918, breaking the curse of the Bambino after coming back from down three to nothing for the first time in all of baseball. Might have been all the sports at that time to come back. They came back down 3 0 to their hated rivals. Which is crazy Yankees when you think about it, too, ALCS. right? When you think about all the stuff that happened, like, the 3 0 lead, how it's been blown so many times since then. Yeah, that was the first time. No one even knows who they beat in the World Series. It didn't matter. It does. You were not screwed. Matter. As soon as they did that to the Yankees, you didn't even have to show up. It was they done. won eight straight after that. Yeah. Um, the Polar Express and The Incredibles both came out in theater in 2004. Polar Classic. Express, great book, crappy movie. Do you like the movie? I love the movie. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. Tom Hanks creeps the hell. I love Tom Hanks, <laughs> but he creeps me out so bad in yeah. that movie. But uh, The Incredibles, I mean, hey, hey, listen, we're not we're creepy here, but Mrs. Incredible. I mean, right? And Ken I mean, Jennings. I mean, so Ken Jennings <laughs> lost in 2004. <laughs> To Nancy Zerg, ending his 74-game winning streak on Jeopardy. Yeah, Nancy. but Mrs. Is that Mrs. Incredible's first name? <laughs> no. We'll dump this. Dump it. It's garbage. So if this sounds funny in uh, when we're recording this, it's because I'm going to dub over what Mike just said <laughs> about a cartoon character. Um, the last thing here is the malice at the palace happened in oh, 2004. Yeah between the Pistons and the Pacers. And I'm going to tell oh. you that recent 30 for 30, or whatever you want to call it on that is. Tell me how you feel. Hey, tell me how me, you really give feel. Me a, give, give me a break. Get, the Pacers were destined to win the, the, the NBA championship that year, but that, that incident ruined it for them. Well, you shouldn't get in the stands and start punching people. So really? You, you should not. No. Yeah. Especially not with meta world. Now, Mind you, I think that it is completely classless and terrible for fans to throw stuff like that. But while honestly, I believe Meta World Peace had the right to go up there and sock that guy, and he missed. By, he didn't even get the right guy, by the way. He hit someone else. No, he did um, not. That guy got away with it. Well, he didn't get away with it, but he got away with not getting hit. Yeah. For Jermaine O'Neal and, and like Steven Jackson and stuff to go up in the stands was completely unnecessary for them to start fighting people. I do believe if you throw something at a fan like that or at a player, you should get hit, but it should be like just you. Well, EJ, by what guy. are what's one of my favorite things to say? You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And those yeah. fans were definitely playing some dumb games. <laughs> and they won. Yes, they were. They won themselves a prize. Yep. And I'm really not. I hated those Pacers teams. Um, absolutely hated them. Was glad when we uh, beat them um, the year before in the championship and um, or not in the championship, but in the Eastern Conference finals to get there. Um, I hated those teams. I hate Reggie Miller. Um, so I wasn't too upset when all that happened to them. Yeah. Hey. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. All right. So back to this trophy. In 2004, Wisconsin AD Barry Alvarez, the legend himself, and Iowa's AD Bob Bowlesby announced that for the first time in the rivalry that they would be playing for a trophy. And they said the bowl, and this is in quotation, symbolizes the type of games that have been typical when the schools meet. I like that. I don't know exactly yeah. what it means, but I like it. I mean, that's the typical football guy thing where it's like, yeah, the bull symbolizes these two teams. It's like, oh, okay. I, mean, I don't I, know totally what you're talking about, but that sounds good to me. I can I can elaborate further in the um, the rankings, but 
I feel like that was a bit of a missed opportunity. One, it's insane that a rivalry that strong took that long to get a trophy yep. in the Big Ten. And yep. two, when you finally do, that's the reason why you couldn't have found some cool things that like tied that was like specific to the two states or like yeah if that's the only reason for the bowl just because it i mean that's a little weird because they're bull fights yeah but well that's not good either because like a bull fight one the mad door is not what that doesn't i don't understand that at all nope so the quotations were from Barry Alvarez playing for the Heartland trophy adds another dimension to what is already a highly anticipated and how is annual competition for college football bragging rights. So I, I believe that I just think they really missed an opportunity um, when it comes to, well, I mean, I, I was definitely a heartland. I mean, I guess you could debate Wisconsin not being part of the heartland. But... Imagine a little badger in Hawk f- fighting. That would be, That'd be tough. So the former Iowa player, Frank Strub, designed and built the third version, which is the one that's currently in use. The third version. Yes, I said the third version. So let me, uh, while I couldn't find, there was like a dead Twitter link uh, link for the first version, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find descriptions of it. I did, however, find descriptions of the second version, um, which... Which let me just describe it to you here. So yeah, wait on me. I am going to start with the quotations. It had some balls on it at first. End quotation. Oh, okay. So Frank Strub and his uh, co-collaborator um, traveled to Russell's trophies and engraving in Urbandale, Iowa, which is a Western suburb of Des Moines. And that is uh, what they came up with, with the bull, but the bull had his reproductive organs. Genitalia. We, still we, on there. So we had massive genitalia that, yes. cause there's honestly, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've been thinking about this for the past 20 minutes or so. This bull and his uh, genitalia, like on the current trophy, it's not very pronounced, but like it's there. Um, my thing is like, just don't have it. Just if, if you're gonna make it this small, because this poor bull is not being uh, represented very well with his genitalia. He looks like um, just not great. Program. You know, I hear that women like girth as opposed to length, uh, and this guy is in big, big trouble. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> CJ points his head to this is a family head. program. So uh well, but like also the problem previously was the size of the the balls. Um, maybe just get rid of it completely. Like I, who's gonna notice? Who is going to notice that the bull doesn't have balls? So this is how we got from second version with balls to third version, no balls. Well, yeah, so this is this is this is what Strub, but is. still a tiny reproductive, which is a, a sham. That's right. that's terrible. So this, this, is how we, is, this is how we got there. So Strub this is in quotations. This is him recanting and remembering what happened that day. So he says in quotations. And when he took it over and showed Bowlesby, who's the AD, <laughs> I think it was Bowlesby <laughs> who said, yeah. We can't have these balls hanging down there. So Strupp said, no problem. I got this. And this is what he says. He says, I'll never forget when Frank took that little exacto knife and just scoop. No. And drop no. them right off right there. That was it. They presented the trophy. The AD from Iowa said, can't have the balls. And he literally grabbed the knife and went. Shoop. And that was it. They gone. Not even during March Madness, where you can sit down and like you know, watch. That's terrible because you know the joke is guys get a vasectomy during March Madness because there's nothing else to do but watch college basketball. Um, that's terrible. That's <laughs> awful. And like, just don't include them on the freaking statue. If, if genitalia is that much of a problem to you, dude, then just don't even include it because. Me looking at what this bull has right now, 
makes me think something's missing or like this poor bull is not very these hey maybe the some of the litter hey, if you maybe were. some of that came off with the balls you know it didn't i don't think it was an exact uh surgical procedure it uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell this trophy I'm not giving away uh, my rankings in the future, but it has dropped significantly because of these comments. That's just absurd. Just make a mold without the freaking genitalia. Well, here we go. That's all I have for you. So why don't we get right into your thoughts? Jeez, Give oh me your rankings. Man. Let's go on a scale from one to five for the listeners here. We do a scale from one to five for looks, uh, one to five for the history of the trophy. Uh, one to five for the history of the rivalry and overall whether it's a bottom tier middle tier top tier mike what do you got looks too i mean listen listen i mean like the bull originally first glance looks good but then whenever i hear about all this bull crap pun intended that's going on i don't like it i don't like it one bit it's a two I mean, it honestly, like it's a big trophy. It's got a nice big base, a big bull. But the fact that there was all this like heat over the freaking genitalia is incredible. So it's a two for me. Uh, history of the rival or history of the trophy. Yes. Like a one? I don't know. Like it's terrible. Like this is a bull fight. Like that's silly. Like there's no, yeah. Sure. It, it seems contrived. Um, rivalry. rivalry itself, though, is a five. I mean, this is a game that we want to see every year. So that's a five. Uh, so, yeah, overall, overall low tier. Here to here. I uh, mean, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not going to be as harsh, although I agree with you on pretty much everything. So I'm going to go three and a half for looks. Um, I, I do like that it's unique. I don't think there's any other bulls. Definitely not. Um, I guess, spoiler alert, definitely not in the Big Ten. Um, I don't know that there's really any other in college football. Uh, three and a half, I, I do appreciate that. Um, I think they could have done better, but uh, the history is definitely a one for me as well. Um, I really think that this, I, I, I don't know, I feel like it should have either it's been contrived. implemented. Yeah, it should have been implemented at the beginning or yeah. it shouldn't have been implemented at all. Or if they yeah. do, like you got to come up with something better than that. Yeah, I, I exactly. like it. I like the idea of having a trophy for this rivalry. I think it should have happened way earlier and they could have done Agree. a better job. Agree. Uh, the rivalry is a five for sure. Um, so I'm going to put this as a middle tier for me just by the numbers, but it's definitely on the lower end of the middle tier for me. Yeah, I, I just can't. I cannot abide the fact that like they had they came up with a bull and then they had all this qualms about its genitalia that's ridiculous well, to be man. fair i don't think there was it was just one person's opinion it was just kind of a last second he you know you just got to blame the ad and maybe he saved future ridicule over something like that but it was just him well, that said no i that shouldn't be then just it. make it just leave it off completely as opposed to taking exacto knife and just that's that was the last draw for me like <laughs> come on and this is 2004 people yeah. were getting away with all kinds of stuff in 2004 like come on hey maybe he didn't want a uh sweet sue incident where you had something that you really liked but you had to change because of cultural changes um oh yeah know? people are always fighting for bull balls rights that's a that's a hot topic and, uh, uh, it's a genitalia on TV. And unfortunately, if it's not a women's genitalia, usually like, you know, it goes up in flames, right? You, you know, you always see that with TV shows and stuff that push the limits with scantily clothed women, but usually doesn't uh, happen with men. That's, damn shame. That's just the facts. Damn shame. <laughs> damn, damn shame. <laughs> Mike is going out on a campaign now scantily clad men doesn't let's matter some, let's get some balls out there folks <laughs> let's get some big balls oh, some geez. trophies let's keep them on trophies oh. all right why don't we uh before this devolves any further why don't we get to <laughs> good <laughs> the preview of these two trophy games this week two of them super excited we'll start off with the paul bunyan trophy 
we have the number six ranked Michigan Wolverines undefeated traveling to the number, I think maybe now eight, eight or nine uh, Michigan State Spartans. I hope it's nine. Get that. Also undefeated in East Lansing, Spartan Stadium. Oh, Paul oh it's on eight. Damn it. One, the Mike, six, nine. what are your predictions for this game? Um, Close. Very close. Um, I think it's going to be a good test for Michigan, who has put up a, a lot of points against inferior opponents. I think this is definitely going to be a tough match for them. Um, it's also going to be tough for Michigan State. And I think they have a good running game, but I'm not sold totally on the passing game. So it, it kind of depends. Um, it depends on the, uh, like, kind of the, the, the rate of play. Like, the, the, it, it depends on how the games can go. You know, if it's where Michigan State jumps out to an early lead, I think they can choke some clock. Uh, I don't know, man. I hope it's exciting. I think it's going to be great. I, I really am looking forward to this game, not just so that I can agitate you and Joe. I think it's going to be a really good game. Uh, I don't want to say who's going to come out on top. I, I really, I, I don't know. And I don't want to wow. say it. people will say that's a coward's way out, but I, I really don't. Wow. I, I really don't. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I hope it's good. I hope everyone has a great time out there. I don't. Um, <laughs> so my, my thoughts are here. I agree. It's going to be close. Uh, these games are always close. It doesn't really matter um, who's ranked where. Uh, very few times is this game out of hand. It's happened, obviously, but typically um, it doesn't get out of hand. And these two teams are very evenly matched. Um, I will say the Spartans are coming off their buy at home. And the things that I'm looking forward to is um, Michigan is very sound. They don't take penalties. They don't make mistakes, but they don't have explosive plays. Um, and the Spartans uh, have a good interior D line to challenge that run game of Michigan. Um, and I, I think the Spartans can potentially exploit some of Michigan's weaknesses in the secondary so because the, we that's do the have big a thing couple. for me. That's the, uh, I, I, I'm I don't sorry, necessarily... I mean, cut you off. But like the, the big thing for me is that like the Spartans are coming off a of bye. Michigan had a good win against a weak opponent. And that, build I, I would I would bet you we're gonna be home dogs oh uh, to well, just to even fill in the narrative to to put the stuff on the uh the old whiteboard you are you are getting three and a half points and I will say that I think um oh gosh shit I really don't want to bet this game I I have no we'll see I'm taking know. the Spartans I think it'll be close I think our passing game, I don't even know if we're really, I think our passing game is going to open up our run game. I think that's the route we're going to take. Uh, that's how we won last year is we just kept throwing it deep with Rocky Lombardi on goes and it worked. I think this passing game is much improved. Um, we have the buy. Uh, we'll see though. I, I, I think Michigan, I think these teams are very evenly matched. I think it's, I'm getting be stressed out <laughs> having to sit with you guys and watch it. I think it's going to be a good game. I, I, think I honestly great think game. it's going to, I think it's going to come down to the end. Great for uh, the state of Michigan. I mean, yeah. the, arguably the best state in football right now, arguably with these two top teams. I really hope Have you winner, heard of Alabama. No, Alabama stinks. Auburn stinks. So, yeah. And Auburn stinks. Uh, Auburn's in the uh, 18. Okay. Let's just clarify this, Mike. You're telling me, as a rabid Alabama fan, Auburn doesn't stink. That Bo Nix doesn't stink well so, so that's the pro you can't say that because bo Nix does stink sometimes name Actually, another the, player on auburn the best state the best state <laughs> for football right now texas not because the longhorns good. not just the longhorns utsa the roadrunners meep beep meep beep well this game is going to be on on fox at noon we might live stream 
I just oh, thought we of this right, right now in my head. It's going to be agonizing, maybe uncomfortable to watch, but we still might live stream some of it. We'll That'd see. be fun. All right, next game. Preview of the Heartland Trophy. Number 11, Iowa Hawkeyes, 6-1, and one, trying to bounce back, traveling to the unranked Wisconsin Badgers, 4-3, and three, coming off a great win um, against Purdue. What do you think? Iowa had a good win this past week, though. Right? So, I mean, you know. Um, hold on. Let me go back. I want to see. Because I was. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Oh, no. Iowa didn't play. Iowa no, lost. they did. They were on a bye. Yeah, they were on a bye. Lost to Purdue. I thought they won. Oh, no. Never mind. Someone else. Mine's blanking. Dump that. Dump it, EJ. So Wisconsin had a good win against Purdue um, yes. after Iowa lost to Purdue. <sighs> Hawkeyes. Just makes sense. That's the way college football goes, baby. It's like rock, paper, scissors. So, so I was going to say the good news for the Hawkeyes here is they still are in control of the West. They can yep. still get to the championship game. Um, so we'll see. Uh, the, the, I don't know where the over-under is going to start. Probably at 30. <laughs> um, I think this will be no point scored. Um, I think and may Iowa, God have mercy on your soul. I think Iowa will bounce back, but I think this, I think Wisconsin might have a little life left in them. It's going to be at Camp Randall. You're taking the Badgers. No, I think Iowa close, but I, oh. I think this is going to be almost a toss up for me. I think the Badgers might, might be able to pull this off at home. I am taking the Hawkeyes for no other reason than I don't think they lose. Like you said, rock, paper, scissors. I th- Purdue this is beats like a coin Iowa, toss. Wisconsin beats Purdue, Iowa beats Wisconsin. Rock, paper, scissors, that's how it rolls. Let's go. This game is going to be on, on ESPN at noon as well. Uh, so if picture and picture still exist. And Wisconsin is it. favored by three. Wisconsin is giving a field goal. I am taking the Hawkeyes. There you go. You heard it there. Ah, and that is going to do it for us. Although you you heard it here and my noon bets stink. So, so don't take it. (laughs) So Mike is taking Michigan Um, (laughs) and that'll do it for this week. Uh, Follow us on Instagram at whiskers.whiskies and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if please follow us on Instagram, like all of our posts, please help us. We appreciate yeah, just, it. Yeah, just I mean, send like us like our YouTube. Yeah, videos. send it, send me a message, dude. Like whenever I we put out the betting posts, call me an idiot. I'm happy to hear that, but just give your pick, and then <laughs> let me ride. Especially if it's a noon one, let me ride. I'm gonna listen to the massacre after. Well, I was just singing the chronic, right? Well, let me ride. Just on the chronic. And then the maskers are my. I'm going to listen to some old rap after this, dude. There you go. So don't forget to check us out. Check out our Saturday bets, like Mike just said. And please send us your favorites for this weekend. Sharing is caring. Let's do Always. it, baby. Sharing is caring. Let's ride together. So join us next week when we talk about another newer trophy, the Heroes Trophy. So for Mike, I'm EJ. Always remember too much of anything is bad. Too much good whiskey is barely enough. Cheers, boys. Cheers.